All throughout history, we've been obsessed with the future. Whether it's predicting fashion, gadgets, or flying cars, there's always been a tendency to fantasize about the tech of tomorrow. You'll often hear about historic predictions of life in the 2000s, maybe through movies like Back to the Future or illustrations made throughout the 20th century. But how did the 2000s think the future would look? Perhaps you saw it as an eco-futuristic blend of nature and technology, or even a gritty urban dystopia. Regardless, as we take a deep dive into the media, design and products of the 2000s, we'll attempt to capture this vision in all of its chaotic but futuristic glory. With a new world of personal digital devices on the horizon, and major leaps in all other areas of technology, Tech Aesthetics aims to reflect the eagerness and anticipation for the future. While certainly not the only style, many of these early UI designs fall under what is now largely known as Frutiger Aero. Using more naturalistic elements like water, glossy swoops of blue and green, and flowers, it became popular in a lot of operating systems at the time. Nicely summed up by this comment, its colour palette and design weren't just used to match the technological hype. The prevalence of natural imagery and grassy plains like the Windows XP wallpaper attempted to make the new tech more familiar and less intimidating. You weren't navigating through a brutalist arrangement of different squares, but rather clear and rounded icons with recognisable imagery. The idea was to both excite buyers and appeal to the more reluctant among them. This is also reflected in the design of the more cutting edge devices. While revolutionary, iPods featured bright and easy to recognise colour schemes, making the then new technology appear less daunting. Looking at the iPod Touch and its app icons, notice the heavy use of blues, gradients and nature. Mail had a backdrop of a sky with clouds, and the Photos app an image of a flower with a bright backdrop. This contrasts the icons of today, which are made of more solid blocks of colour, rejecting any direct reference to nature in their design. Even Photos is now just a collection of random colours on a white backdrop. We can see this in the original YouTube icon as well, where, being a TV, it was designed to explicitly and clearly state the purpose of the app even for people that might not have known what YouTube was yet. In most of these cases, this aesthetic aimed to convey the function of apps through their relation to the real world. This made sense, as they didn't yet have an established digital identity, so linking them to already existing and understood concepts was advantageous. Consequently, especially for the younger generation, the popularity of this aesthetic influenced their conception of the future, the biggest theme being the idea of eco-futurism. While not only appearing friendly and accessible, Frutiger Aero's fusion of nature and all new technology showed a world just over the horizon where environments and development would harmoniously exist. In a period of intense technological development, nature was still being featured as an integral part of digital land landscapes and UI, every step of the way. This is why Frutiger Aero is so nostalgic today for people who grew up in the 2000s. For them, it wasn't simply another tech gimmick, done to appeal to trepidatious older consumers. Rather, it was an exciting glimpse into the future. A future they weren't old enough to fully engage with, but new looked exciting. It's no secret that the commercials of today are pretty boring. As traditional TV and media has begun to fall behind streaming services, there's been less incentive to create the kinds of commercials you'd see in the 2000s. Just have a look at this ad for Windows Me, with the shots of huge floating cubes interspersed with beams connecting two people's computers. You're being sold on the idea that the tech is essentially just magic. Compare this to more recent ads in which operating systems are shown to be much more grounded, advertised based on their functions more than the excitement behind them. Obviously, this isn't a bad thing. It just highlights how people's attitudes towards technology have changed. Almost everyone has a computer now and doesn't need to be amped up by the idea of electric beams of light connecting them to their boss over Zoom. These older sorts of visuals definitely had lasting effects, however. In my brain, I still kind of see the idea of online connectivity as a giant grid of interconnected squares with different people inside them. Moving on to car commercials, we can see a lot of the eco-futurism I mentioned earlier in some of the ads for hybrids. This Toyota commercial, for example, shows a kind of surreal utopia where tech is flawlessly integrated with cars, nature, and birds for some reason. Anyway, Ford's 2010 hybrid commercial shares some of these same themes, with the leaves emerging from the dash and being expelled from the car. The main point here is that a lot of big companies were painting the idea that we were inevitably and rapidly headed towards some sort of weird, hyper-sustainable landscape. Where a modern ad would show the cars in some dense, inner-city environment, they would often opt for more futuristic backdrops, showing an idealistic and futuristic landscape. Of course, this wasn't just hybrid cars and UI. Even credit cards leaned into this aesthetic for advertising. They'd show you their new piece of tech and quickly flash over to a grassy landscape with butterflies or something, giving the idea that it was fresh and innovative, but not to the extent that it was intimidating, inaccessible, or a threat to the status quo. Some of these old commercials were so memorable that people still think about them to this day. Have a look at any compilation and you'll find comments just like this. 
Obviously, working as intended, a lot of people were comforted by the future that our technology was racing to match. Looking at movies from around this time, the city from Meet the Robinsons and even the later Tomorrowland played into this idea as well. Being set in 2037, Meet the Robinsons was one of the first to realise this eco-futuristic utopia on screen. With elements of Frutiger Aero sprayed all over the city of Todayland, including the bubbles people were transported in and the presence of grassy balconies and colours, it definitely contributed to people's idea of the future in the 2000s. Tomorrowland shows this again, with buildings that have nature as a core element of their design, despite having gravity-defying twists in their walkways and even jetpacks. A lot of this reminds me of breathing houses, the use of plants as functional ventilation, and a bunch of other architectural concept art I saw spring up about a decade ago. Now, not every piece of media made use of this optimistic aesthetic to appeal to consumers. Some futuristic conceptions and predictions were the exact opposite, often highlighting the worst possible consequences of such rapid innovation. Being set in 2199, The Matrix is the best example of this. Showing a world run entirely by machines, a lot of its success came from the fact that people were, and still increasingly are, terrified of this possibility. The idea that our own creations could eventually enslave us was a captivating premise, especially at a time when we were being sold on technological optimism and idealism. Wally explores a similar future, showing a dystopia where humans have destroyed nature in their race to serve themselves. Constantly plugged into devices and floating several light years away from the Earth, it offers a stark contrast to the alternative and much more appealing vision of the future shown in the 2000s. Overall, growing up I felt like we were headed towards one of two things. It was either going to be this unnaturally green, advanced society that kind of smelled like hand soap, or some dark dystopia where we've lost control of either ourselves or the machines. Moving to the current day, I'm still not sure which of those is more likely, and how close they'll end up being when compared to predictions from the past, or even the weird accuracy of The Simpsons. I do know for sure that I miss a lot of these old UI designs. While some of them definitely went overboard, I can't say that I don't prefer the fresher feel they gave to simple actions like scrolling or browsing. The future depicted in the 2000s, particularly influenced by Frutiger Aero, was definitely unique and I can understand its recent rise in popularity, as more and more people remember the designs and media they were familiar with in the past. Part of me hopes modern aesthetics will venture back into some of these more unorthodox styles to spice things up, even if they weren't everyone's cup of tea. But let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video, as we've got a lot more coming up in the future. If you want to watch a little more, maybe one of the two videos here might interest you, so feel free to check them out. As always, this has been Extramin, and I'll see you all in the next one.